name is Stuart Thompson. I'm the owner of Thompson RV Service. So today we are going to be installing the Moride SRE 4000 kit. Along with that, we're also going to be doing their wet bolt kit as well. And I'm going to be welding the leaf spring hangers. We're going to box those in and you know give them a little bit added support as well. So the big reasons that this upgrade is worthwhile to just about everybody is the fact that these trailers are not built with any wiggle room in their axle and suspension ratings. So with that, if any way we can get rid of some of that shock, you know, from potholes and bridges, the better. So with saying all that, let's get into this uh, install and see you out there. Let's kind of go over some of the components. Obviously you have the new equalizers. These are going to replace, you know, on this trailer, there's just, you know, a solid, solid bar pretty much that ties everything together. Uh, another common one is the Lippert equalizer. That's the yellow one that you'll see. Uh, Moride also has the CRE 3000 kit, which is also a great kit. Um, the kind of the biggest difference is the, the CRE 3000 has three inches of travel. The SRE has four inches of travel. And if you put them side by side, there is a good amount of size difference. So there is places to where you're going to want to use one over the other. And again, this one does add about an inch to an inch and a half of height to your trailer. So if you're already at that, you know, 13, six range, you know, like the tall fifth wheels and whatnot, this probably wouldn't want to be the kit that you'd want to do just because then you're going to be going into that 13, seven range. And with, you know, majority of DOTs and whatnot, they want you at that 13, six or under, cause after that you're over height. So again, keep that in mind when you're uh, looking into systems to know what height your trailer is and then afterwards regardless of the height make sure you measure you know because it's always good to know the exact height of your air conditioners because the last thing you want to do is come up to a bridge and that last second go am i going to fit um that 10 minutes it takes you to measure will save you thousands of dollars in repairs after you rip the air conditioners off the top so let's not do that but so kind of the first first thing is going to be with this install is going to be getting the trailer you know all the slides brought in um, you know, make sure obviously everything is locked up nice and tight and then get the old stuff pulled off and we're going to do one side at a time. Uh, I do things a little bit different because obviously I'm a mobile guy. Um, so I do, you know, kind of one axle at a time. I use jacks and jack stands, um, versus lifts and whatnot, but, uh, exact same process. This is probably a great video if you're a DIYer, um, cause this is how you would end up doing it in your driveway. Cause this unit currently is sitting in a driveway. So. Let's get going. All right, so I got the tire off. The one big thing I wanted to point out, like I said, when we were talking, when we were back by the truck, these are your, you know, front spring mounts. And a lot of times you'll see, like on a lot of Facebook groups and whatnot, that this bracket will get twisted off or, you know, it will shear off right here. As you can tell, like this, this frame actually has this extender plate here to bring the shackle mount out a little bit. I haven't seen any failures with this specific style, but this is also a pretty newish style frame that's on the market. You know, for the most part, majority are I-beams. This is actually a bolted together frame. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of a uh, quarter inch plate and weld it onto this backside. So this will be solid. We'll get everything repainted afterwards. And the, like I said, the biggest advantage to that is it's going to tie everything together and I will also, also, you know, finish up welding these and I will honestly probably even touch up this plate with a little bit more fill weld just to, you know, add again, a little bit more strength just because I'm here. So an issue I'm going to have with this install here 
is with how this unit's parked in the driveway, it's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but the front of the trailer is almost on the ground. The back is obviously completely off the ground. So even, you know, my full size jack, luckily this unit actually has frame rails on the side for auto leveling. Um, and with that, you can use a jack on those mounts because they are designed to take the weight of the trailer. So I'm almost gonna have to work my way around here, uh, doing one at a time. You know, you, you, with this type, since you can't fully take all the weight off of both both axles and put everything on, you know, the actual axle tubes themselves onto stands, it's gonna be a little bit more finicky just to get things lined up and put into place. It's still possible, it's just a little bit more of uh, elbow grease needed to be able to do it because I, unfortunately enough, I can't get both axles on both sides off the ground simply because the back of the trailer is almost two and a half feet off the ground and obviously my jack stands only go to I think 24 inches. So it's a workaround, it'll take a little bit longer, but again, still completely doable. Then let's take everything nice and slow. Oop, get the focus here. There we go. So again, with this, you're gonna be using a jack underneath just to control, because obviously you do need to get this plastic bushing out. It's gonna be getting replaced with these bronze ones. Again, I'll pull these out. This trailer has about 700 miles on it going down the road, so it's pretty much brand new. If you want, you can use the old bolt to, you know, work out the plastic junk. Then, again, bronze, get it inserted in there. Use a soft mallet for this. Then, kind of make sure that it's lined up on both sides. And then you're simply just going to jack this back up into place. Get your grease fitting. These, you can either face in or out. It, it doesn't quite matter. Um, some units, I have noticed that, you know, with clearance issues and whatnot, it's easier to put the grease fitting to the inside for your maintenance aspect. Other times, it's easier to go on the outside. This particular trailer, just taking a look at it, it's gonna be easy enough to uh, reach everything from the outside. So at that point, you don't have to crawl underneath your trailer. So that's the way I'm gonna put them in. Again, barely tap. If it takes anything more than that, you, you're kind of going to need to get it to align correctly. You're going to be taking it again. Let me just get another one of these bolts. You will see, you know, it has these, you know, grooves. So you're only gonna be able to tap through into there and then you can use the nut and which will suck that back in. So again, do not beat on that Zerk fitting cause you will break it. One thing I do wanna note is if you are gonna actually not be doing the wet bolt upgrade kit, when you have to take these out cause you do end up having to hit them with a hammer cause again, those grooves lock in and leave the nut on, you know, get everything loose, back the nut off a little bit and then you can use a regular hammer to hit it. Uh, do not hit the actual threads because you'll regret that when you go to put them back in if you, uh, you know, mess up a thread. So just leave the nut in place, you know, just uh, loosen up a little bit and use that to, uh, you know, get it out just that little tiny bit. You know, here's one of the old ones. You can see it's just, uh, you know, that little bit of teeth will, will hold it. Again, the big thing with a lot of this stuff, I mean, again, this is a new trailer. With the style that I'm having to do this with, I mean, you can loosen things up and again, just watch for it because, you know, there's no tension, whatnot. Again, just be careful while you're doing all of it this way. 
I do have some jack stands that you can't see that are just uh, right behind the tire, just in case a jack does give out. Um, yeah, I'm not trapped under here. So I want to point out the biggest reason why you want to upgrade these shackles is again, you'll see tons of horror stories online about these breaking, twisting off the eyelets letting out. So here is the factory, you know, it comes with this plastic bushing. This one, obviously, you know, it's just still within the equalizer, but you know, it doesn't look too bad. This is actually a little bit better than I see on most. Um, again, just plastic bushing. These have 700 miles on them. They're already chewed up at the ends and you, and it's hard to see, but you can already see that it's worn out on the inside from, you know, just that little bit of rub. Now going up to the Moride kit, you know, it can give you a, you know, a good idea of just how much bigger these shackles are. So obviously hopping up to that, I mean, you, you are adding beyond strength to your suspension system. Plus going to the brass bushings, you know, they'll actually move. And then the fact that they're serviceable is just amazing. I mean, if you keep these greased, they will last the life of your trailer. Uh, it's, you know, I kind of recommend every time you go around, you do your wheel bearings at least once a year, hit these with a couple pumps and you're good to go. Um, and it's just inexpensive insurance as far as I'm concerned, because it's not when these are going to break or if these are going to break, it's when they're going to break. These, like I said, as long as you leave them serviced, they'll last the life of your trailer. So obviously before I put it on, I just kind of wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of just how different these two systems are. Work the exact same in a sense as far as what they're meant to do. This one just has the built-in suspension and obviously is built much heavier. So again, it's not hard to tell that one's gonna last a little bit longer than the other. All right, so wrapping up with this Moride video, some of the big takeaways from putting the system on your RV or having somebody put it on your RV that I've noticed, because this is my personal unit that I installed it on, is it is very noticeable how much less movement is actually going on inside the camper going down the road. We have roughly about 2,500 miles now on the trailer with the Moride set, set up on it. And going into the trailer after, you know, two, 300 miles or so to, you know, use the bathroom or whatnot. We're very good at strapping things down as it is, but you know, spices in the pantry and that type of stuff aren't all shook around, not knocked over. So it definitely does take some of the beating out of the trailer, which, which is a great improvement. Cause obviously if it's doing that, then it's obviously also, you know, just a lot less stress is transferring to, you know, the frame and the structure which hopefully you know, adds to the longevity of the trailer itself. As of right now, I am greasing the bushings every, pretty much almost every time I, you know, before I hit the road, I'll put a pump or two in each of them. Is it overkill? Most likely, uh, but it's kind of a sample because I want to be able to, after a year or so, pull the bushings out, kind of see how badly they are worn if they're going to need to be replaced and whatnot so i can you know start giving my customers a, a very honest opinion as far as how much you should grease them how long the bushings are going to last because as of right now i mean it does come down to maintenance so at this i'm going to kind of do this test with them being maintained as heavily as possible with that being said awesome system awesome install would not, you know, obviously it's something that any DIYer could take on as long as they have the proper jacks and, you know, put the, the proper safety. Don't hit me too bad in the video for wearing sandals during, during that first portion. Uh, we were on vacation. I honestly, usually when I go on vacation, I don't bring, you know, my, my work clothes. Uh, so I did not have my work boots with me. So be easy on me on that one. <laughs> uh, but other than that, thanks a lot to Moride for, you know, sending this stuff out for me to, to be able to put this video together obviously hopefully you know help you guys out if you have any questions leave them down below uh but other than that so far excellent excellent stuff and i am i am very very thrilled with with this uh upgrade to the trailer 
Till next time, guys. Have a good one. Keep going.